So welcome to Tennis Equipment 101. Um, so basically, as you guys mostly know me by now, I talk pretty quickly, I say a lot of things. So I apologize if only a certain amount of it sticks in your head. Um, feel free to ask any questions as I go throughout um, until I get to the end and then you can, you can sort of have one-on-ones and have personal conversations about your kids and where they are and I'm happy to answer those questions. All right. Yeah, come on. So, so. Uh, so first I'm gonna start by just going over some terms when it comes to rackets. Um, so when I say things, you'll know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, so we talk about the handle of the racket, that's obviously the part you hold on to, um, the throat of the racket, and the head of the racket, right? So the head is where the strings are, um, all that sort of good stuff. When we talk about rackets, there are a few specs that we talk about, right? We're going to talk about weight of the racket, whether it's heavy or light. Um, so when we talk about weight, we're talking about when it comes to adult rackets from that sort of nine ounce range to about 11 ounces is where most adult rackets will fall. Um, in, um, in grams, you're talking about 250 to about 315, that sort of range. And we talk about head size. Most players, juniors, competent juniors, average adult players, so on and so forth, they're gonna end out around 100 square inches is about average nowadays. So the small side of that is gonna be your 95 to 98s. And on the big side of that's gonna be your sort of 102 to 115s, where you sort of find what I call those grandpa and grandma trampolines, you know, where you really hold the racket up and it does all the work for you. The you know, next thing we talk about is balance. So where the weight is distributed so whether the weight is more concentrated in the handle or whether the weight is more concentrated in the head of the racket. Generally speaking, as you move from rackets that are overall lighter to rackets that are overall heavier, the balance moves from the head of the racket down to the handle of the racket. So a racket that's generally heavier overall, more of the weight is gonna be concentrated in the handle. Because those players will generally be strong enough to move the thing around and they want to be able to whip it really quickly as opposed to a less adept player who needs more mass towards the head of the racket to help them mm -hmm. and doesn't have the full body strength or arm strength to really get that racket moving around <clears throat> the last three things we talk about at least these are the big ones that i care about are grip size so when we talk about grip size we're not talking about the length of the handle we're not talking from the butt of the racket to the throat we're talking about the circumference um, so in um, the U.S. system, we say four and zero eighths, four and one eighth, four and a quarter, four and three eighths. Uh, Europeans are much smarter than us, I think. They say zero, one, two, three, four, five. In other words, the number of eighths of an amateur round. Um, so most uh, younger players will end up when they in their first adult racket, they'll take a four and zero eighths or a zero um, or a one, and then as they grow older, most of the top junior players are going to be in probably four and a quarter or four and three eighths is where most of them end up. But grip size, a lot of the time, is a preference. It, there isn't a right or wrong answer when it comes to this stuff. Um, you've got big boys like Roger and Rafa, who are both using four and a quarter. Um, you also have players like Serena and Venus, who are both using either five eighths or seven eighths. Um, so it's sort of up to the player what works for them. Um, generally, we'll say from the older generation, they tend towards bigger grip sizes because I mean, four and five eighths is just the norm. And if you found a four and a half, like holy guacamole, you found the smallest grip in the world. As it's opposed a, to, uh, is yeah. a larger grip uh, heavier in the grip handle? No, so they actually they make sure that the rackets, the same racket with grip, bigger grip size and a smaller grip size, are the same weight. Okay. They should be, assuming no factory error, of course. Um, but it can feel heavier or feel lighter because there's more mm -hmm. on your hand, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, but with uh, the more modern players, they'll tend towards smaller grip sizes. Um, just because it's easier to maneuver the rack and whip it around and get that ferocious topspin that you see from the likes of Jack Sock and Akirios and those guys. Next thing we talk about are string patterns. We talk about open string patterns or closed string patterns. Hey. Um, so your more open string patterns these days, the most open ones I've seen are either 16 by 15 um, or 14 by 18. Um, that means fewer strings versus a more closed, what we call a dense string pattern, which is 18 by 20, or if you were Andre Agassi in his prime, 20 by 22, even. Um, so generally speaking, the easiest way to remember this is more strings, more control, because when you think about it, it's harder to push against more strings. Um, there's also less string-to-string -string movement. 
Because mm-hmm. there's more points of friction. Yeah. I thought Augustine was like a more power player. So how was 2020? How was that his? Because he needed more control? control. So he needed something to help bring him in. He was very good about coming through the ball and hit it, taking it very early. Um, so Jeff, so he took on a more control-oriented uh, string pattern as opposed to the likes of, let's say, Rafa Nadal, who's just thirsting for spin all day, every day. Um, so he uses a more open string pattern. And the last thing we talk about is stiffness. And now this is the thing that will confuse the hell out of everyone, and I apologize in advance. It gets most coaches baffled as well, and it's my life's goal to fix everyone on this. The stiffer the racket is, the more power it gives you. The more flexible the racket is, the more control it gives you. Here's the analogy I'll make. If you throw a ball at a wall, it comes back with a decent amount. It comes back pretty quickly. You throw a, a ball at a mattress, it doesn't come back with as much. The mattress absorbs it. It's more, in this example, flexible. The wall is stiffer. So there's more energy that's transferred from the ball, uh, from the racket into the ball if it's stiffer, and more of the energy from the ball into the racket if it's more flexible. The reason why this gets confusing is, as normal human beings, we associate the word stiff with meaning tough, difficult, ow, I have a stiff back, right? I don't feel good. So that's why a lot of people will say stiff rackets are more controlled, but that is completely backwards. Stiffer, more power, more flexible, more control. What makes a racket stiff versus flexible? How they lay up the graphite, how they decide to put the racket together and what materials they use. Um, so that'll determine how much the racket gives when the ball hits it. So to test the flexibility of a racket, what they'll do is, at least one way to do it is you put it on a machine and you lay it like this. They actually have something that puts a fixed amount of pressure at the head of the racket, and based on how much it bends, that's how they know how flexible the racket is. Yeah? Would kids be recommended, what would be more recommended for kids like a 12-year-old? Something firm or something flexible? More often than not, I'd be recommending something firm because they're you know weak and chicken armed. Um, so I'd rather give them as much help as they can get. Um, so that's why you'll see a lot of kids will pick up a, like a pure drive light or a pure arrow light because they're very stiff and they do a lot of work and they also look really cool. Um, but if a kid, let's say, has maybe some wrist or elbow issues, maybe I'll put them in something a little softer, a little more flexible. Good question. So those are the, the general specs or the things that we talk about when it comes to rackets. So how do we choose the right racket? I think that's sort of the whole point of this, right, is how do we figure it out? My number one thing is try stuff, right? Every player is a little different. Even my best recommendation, the player may think I'm nuts and they pick up something else, they fall in love with it and they play the best tennis of their lives. So always try stuff. Um, I generally, what I like to do with people is I will throw about four to six rackets at them on day, on day one. They'll hit a few balls with each. They'll like just throw away half of them without even thinking about it because it's just, nope, not for me, it doesn't feel right. And you'll narrow it down to a couple, play test those side by side for another couple weeks, and then make a decision. You don't want to go trying every single racket on the wall for 52 weeks a year. That's what I do. My tennis has suffered, so yours doesn't have to. Um, because at, there's so many rackets out there, so many brands, so many different technologies, you can really just go down the rabbit hole and you'll just be lost forever, never feel like you have a home and a racket that you like. So. Let someone, either let me or someone else, narrow it down to a couple of good options for you so that no matter what you choose, you're right. Um, and then you just sort of have to make a decision and take a personal preference. Also, bear in mind when you're demoing rackets that more often than not, it's not going to be strong with your particular strain and your particular tension. Um, so what I always tell, whether it's kids or adults, is focus on how the racket feels to swing. To sort of, is the racket, does it feel natural in your hand? Can you get the racket out in front? on a consistent basis? Does your shoulder hurt from serving? All that sort of stuff. Because at point of contact, we can change a lot of that with the strings. Um, whether I put a really hard string or a really soft string, I can make rackets feel completely different, even if they're the exact same racket. This is one of those things, number three is probably one of my favorite things to talk about. What a lot of people will do is they'll say, I want more topspin in my game, so let me buy a racket that, quote, enhances more topspin. Sure. There are some rackets that are more spin friendly than others, but at the end of the day, if you don't hit with any top spin, the racket's not gonna do it for you. So if you're like, hmm, I don't hit with a lot of spin, let me get a spin friendly racket, so I'll get more spin on the ball. Sure, if you take zero and multiply it by nine, you'll still end up with zero. 
So what I try to tell people to do is instead find a racket that complements what you do. So if you like to hit flat and you plow through the ball, let's go for, a, let's say, a denser string pattern. Let's maybe go for even a smaller head size because you need that control. Your, your swing path is pretty normal. It's pretty straight through. So you don't need that extra width in that head size to brush the ball, right? So you should always try to pick a racket that actually complements what you do, not uh, enhances attributes you do not have. Um, always, if you can, seek the knowledge of a professional. Um, or do a lot of reading, do a lot of research. Um, don't just pick a racket off the wall and go for it. I mean, there are people out here to help you, and that's especially what I'm here for. Um, and like I said earlier, just to reiterate it again, there isn't a right or wrong answer on this. There are some things I would highly, highly, highly not recommend, and things I would highly recommend. Um, but at the end of the day, it's up to the player and what works for him or her. <clears throat> Gonna move on to strings, unless there are some lingering general questions on rackets. So the terms we're going to talk about when it comes to strings are mains and crosses. The mains are the strings that go vertically on the racket, so if I'm holding the racket straight up, those are the ones that go up and down. And then the crosses are the ones that obviously go cross, uh, the horizontal. Um, we split them up because you can do different strings on each, um, but then we'll move on to number two. Uh, the types of strings, this is just generally speaking that you'll come in contact with. There are technically a few others, but you can hear more there. There is natural gut, which is literally cow intestines. It takes about two cows to make one set of string. If you ever want to go visit the factory uh, in France, Babylon has a wonderful factory. It smells putrid, and these people, these people have been working there for decades, and they love it, and it's, it's hilarious. It's awesome. Um, but so that's natural gut. Um, it's also it's the priciest. It's the whatever you want to pick your luxury car or luxury watch of choice. It's that um, supreme feel, ultimate comfort. Um, a lot of players still do use it on the tour. I'd say about a third of them still use it in a hybrid. There's very few that I know of that are still on the tour that use a full set of gut. Um, but a lot of players want that sort of beautiful soft feel, but mixed with something else. The next type is what we call a multi-filament. This is the attempt of a synthetic fiber to mimic natural gut. So these are strings that you've heard of maybe NXT, NRG2, Reflex, Velocity, Sensation. All these sorts of strings are little, little strands woven together, which is why we call them multi-filaments, because there are many filaments. Um, and generally what makes one softer than another is the number of filaments. So in other words, how thin they are and how many they can bundle in together. Um, Downside, generally speaking, to these is that they're going to be a little less durable, but that's the whole point, is that they're softer. What makes something softer makes it less durable. Finally, they're polyesters, or also we call them monofilaments, because they are just one piece of plastic. Yeah? No, just Oh, yeah, one. okay. <laughs> um, these are strings, the ones you've probably heard of most are the Luxlon out of power. Um, that is the most used uh, polyester string on tour. Um, Selenco Hyper-G, that crazy green stuff that every kid has to have, whether they should be using it or not. Um, Selenco Torbite, or Battle at RPM Blast. All these types of strings are great for spin, durability, control. They're just not super arm friendly. <laughs> so the analogy I'll make for multi-filaments is think rubber bands. You know, they're stretchy, they give, they're soft. Uh, for polyester, think wires, right? You know, they're, they're hard, they don't give much, and once they do give, they're not coming back, it's not, it's mm -hmm. not coming back. The other things we talk about with strings are tension. So in other words, how tight I'm pulling on the strings. The analogy I'll make here is a trampoline. If I make a trampoline really loose, it's much easier to depress and get more of a boing, boing. Um, and then the higher you go, thing more like, again, the trampoline, if I pull it really taut, there's no bouncing because it's pulled tight enough. Gauge is, we talk about how thick or thin the string is. Um, so the thicker, um, that's going to be like, let's say, a 16 or 15L. Those are going to be your thicker gauges. Um, they make strings as thin as a 19 or 20 gauge. So that's um, the thinner is going to be for more comfort, more power. Because again, think, again, rubber bands are a really good example. You ever use those really thick rubber bands? They're hard to pull. The thin ones, you pull even a little bit, they snap in half, and you have to use a new one. Same thing with strings, same idea. Hybrids, that's where we put one string in the mains and one string in the cross. More often than not, you'll do a polyester with a multi-filament or gut. 
Um, but there are some players who will do a poly with a poly or a multi with a multi. It's just rare, um, but it does happen. And then stiffness, so whether it's a soft string or a hard string, multifilaments being soft, um, polyesters being hard. And just to help put it sort of on a spectrum for you, um, so from on the soft end of the spectrum, where things are really easy, comfortable, power, protects the wrist, the elbow, all that sort of stuff, is gonna be your natural gut. Um, that's gonna be the softest thing around. And then you'll see on the other end of the spectrum is polyester. And you can see everything in between. So you go from natural gut to a multi-filament to what we call a reverse hybrid, which is where you put the multi-filament or the gut in the mains, um, a standard hybrid where you're putting the polyester in the mains, and then finally a full polyester setup that's going for your, your softest, easiest, comfortable setup, all the way to your tough guy, tough gal, um, breaking strings every five minutes sort of setup. Um, and so that the same thing goes for thickness. Um, the thinner, the more comfortable. Um, the thicker, the more control and the more difficult. Um, and yeah. <clears throat> Factors to consider when choosing a string. Um, we look at the age and physical prowess. So even before I consider how adept the kid is, there's some kids here who are up to my waist who I would never give a polyester string to, even if their forehands look 20 times better than mine. Just because they don't have the arm strength, you want to protect them, you need to give them power and comfort. Um, so the first thing I always look for is you know, basically how big are they, right? If I'm you know, dealing with a football linebacker who's never played tennis in his life, I'm still going to give him, you know, a heavier racket, harder strings, and higher tensions, just because he's got the physical strength to do it. If I bump into this little girl who's again got the prettiest strokes I've ever seen in my life in the <coughs> valley, with the on the orange courts, I'm still going to give him a lighter racket, softer strings, bigger head sizes. So that's really important. Uh, skill level is number three, though. So a more skilled player will generally move towards a polyester string just because it gives them more spin, more durability. Um, but again, every player is different. I have some really good players who still play with a full bed of multifilament and they love it and they kick some serious butt with it. So who am I to tell them? Um, existing injuries. When, if any of you have ever had a conversation about string with me or rackets, the first thing I'll ask is do you have any wrist, elbow, or arm issues before I say anything else? Um, because if you do have any of those issues, I'm not, even if you want more spin and you want more durability, I don't want to take you off the court for six weeks. Um, so that's when, I'll, if you do have any of those issues, I'll push you towards something softer, something easier. And then finally, desired outcomes. It's like, what are you looking for in a string that you're not getting now? Are you looking to get more spin? Are you looking to get more durability? Are you having arm issues? Are you looking for something a little softer? Um, so those are really the things I like to look at and consider when choosing strings. And frankly, the same stuff comes for rackets as well. <coughs> And so I'll finish, I'll finish up with what I sort of outline as three prototypical players just as examples. So the first example I'll give is a kid's first adult racket. So this kid has matriculated through red ball, orange ball, green dot. He's now ready for his first 27 inch racket. Uh, he's playing full yellow ball, good for him. Um, generally I'll be recommending something on the lightweight side of town. Again, if he or she's a little stronger than average, I might go something in the high nine ounce range, but I'm still going to keep them below 10 ounces for sure. Because again, they don't, they don't have the arm strength to wield a heavier racket, and a heavier racket can risk either hurting them or making them lazy. Um, because what will happen is a heavier racket will do more work for you, there's more mass behind it. So what you'll see is if you give a kid a heavier racket, they'll feel great about it for 30 minutes. A, after an hour, their arm will start to hurt. And B, it'll prevent them from getting that full, proper, committing to the stroke sort of action that we're trying to get out of them. Instead, they'll sort of just sort of coast and become very lazy. So that's why I generally stay away from them. And to the point of your earlier question, I would generally pick a stiffer than average racket because it's gonna, they're pretty young. I'm not worried that they've you know, had tennis level for 15 years and they're just coming back to tennis, right? That's not the conversation we're having with a kid. Um, so I'll give them a stiffer racket, um, but then you'll see with the strings, you put a soft string in there just to make sure you know, we're not hurting them, we're being smart about it. Um, at a low tension and potentially a thinner gauge because I'm not worried about you know string breakers more often than not when they're moving into their first adult racket um, but as they do start to break strings that's when we have the conversations of thicker strings, harder strings, all that sort of stuff like that but for a kid's first adult racket this is the sort of prototypical setup lightweight, average head size, stiff 
ish, stiffer, um, and then soft strings. The second prototypical player I'll talk about is sort of a recreational adult. So, you know, this person isn't joining a tour anytime soon. They play in clinics maybe once or twice a week, just playing some tennis maybe to, to hit with their kids a bit. Um, this is when I'll probably give them something in that mid-weight range, so in that low 10 to mid 10 ounce range, because as an adult you're strong enough to swing something around. Um, again, average to average plus head size, because you maybe don't want to work that hard. You want the racket to help you out a bit. Um, and then also you'll sort of choose a mid-flex racket. You don't need the ultimate control in the world. You don't need the ultimate feel, because I don't know if you can really feel the difference anyways. Um, and then uh, I also don't want to hurt you on the other end of the spectrum. I don't want it to be too stiff and then start causing, or sort of uh, risking causing tennis elbow and things like that. And then I'll still probably stick with soft strings, because again, you're not ripping through them, you're not on the tour. Soft strings are great, they feel wonderful. Um, average tension, depending on strength, like always, and then a thin or an average gauge. And then finally, the last player I'll talk about is sort of your top tier junior player. Um, these are the kids, you know, on the top banks on you know, later in the night. Um, these kids are mostly gonna be in that mid to high 10 ounce range. Um, some will even some will even be above 11 ounces, very few, and I generally don't recommend it, but there's some who can handle it and love it, so again, who am I to tell them? Uh, they'll be on the average to smaller than average head size. Um, they'll take, a lot of them will take the average head size because they want that room to brush the ball. Um, so with the smaller head size, even if you're dead on, it's tough to keep it in that sweet spot given how much people brush up on the ball for the topspin. Um, but they can afford to go to smaller head sizes. That's where you'll see a lot of the, the blades, for example. You'll see radicals out there. That's the orange one from head. Um, so those are probably where they'll be, and they'll also tend to more flexible rackets because now they're, they're at a higher level. They can feel the ball a bit, bit more. They want to feel it a bit more. They want more control. Um, and then this is when they'll sort of get into those, the hyper G life, um, mid to low tensions. Um, just again to help protect them because they are using harder strings um, and they also want to get you know more tops then and with looser strings they can slide around a bit more they can come over the ball more as opposed to a tighter string where they have to really plow through as opposed to coming over um, and then it's sort of up to the player if they're willing to deal with the lack of durability of a thinner string great more feel more spin all power to you if they want you know they don't want to come to me every day get handing in rackets um, they'll tend towards a thicker gauge, so they'll use the 16 gauge or even thicker if they can get their hands on it. So before I go to questions, uh, the poster did mention that I would talk about shoes for a little bit. Shoes are a little more of a personal preference. Um, they're, generally speaking, there are two, two types of shoes. You'll find shoes that are sort of more heavier, supportive, more cushioned. Um, those are for people who either, let's say, have ankle, hip, knee issues that they want to protect against, um, or they just want more durability out of shoe, because generally the heavier the shoe is, the more shoe there is. Um, so it'll hold up a little better, so that's, that's one end of the spectrum. The other end is gonna be sort of the more lightweight, running-ass, minimalist kind of shoe where you're basically on the ground and you don't feel much. Um, that's for players who just want to feel completely connected, want to feel light and fast and speedy on the court. Um, the major downside obviously being durability and some stability. If you're buying any tennis shoe, any, let's say the top tier tennis shoes, so from Nike we're talking about Vapors and Cages, um, from Asics we're talking Resolution 8s um, and Speed FFs, um, from Adidas we're talking Uber Sonics and Soul Courts. If you're getting any of those top tier shoes, you're fine. They're great, they have great stability, even if they're lighter weight or heavier. Yeah. Would they both be good for hard or clay courts? They would work for both. You don't need a separate shoe for clay. Perfect segue. Uh, so that's up to the player. Again, here in the States, it's going to be relatively tough to find clay court shoes just because it's not, a lot of the companies don't sell them to us. Um, it's unfortunate, it's infuriating. I yell at them all the time. Um, but there is a difference between a hard court shoe and a clay court shoe, and I will show you. Here's the exact same model shoe. One's a hard court and one's a clay court shoe. You'll notice on my right, your left, is the hard court shoe. It's not a uniform sole throughout. 
It can be different. You'll sometimes you'll see little, little like circular patterns. This is Nike's newest one to help you slide more because Lord knows we all need to slide more on hard courts. <laughs> um, and then on my left and your right, you'll see it's a clay shoe. So this is a full, what we call a full herringbone sole. So it'll give you a little better traction on the clay. And you'll also see on the top, it has a tighter mesh pattern. So the clay doesn't actually get into the shoe as much. Um, so there is a difference. What I generally recommend for a lot of players, um, if you can't get your hands on a clay court shoe, have two pairs of shoes, one that you'll use on clay, and one that you can destroy the tread on the hard courts and not worry that you don't have a tread when you need to play on clay. Um, the actual models, there isn't a particular model that I would say is good for clay or good for hard court. Generally speaking, you won't need or want as much cushioning on a clay surface because it's softer already and you may want more cushioning when you're on a hard court surface. Um, so there is an issue, like I said, that's, I wouldn't say like Resolution 8's use on hard courts, Speed FF's use on clay courts. I'd say use the Resolution 8 if you like the Resolution 8. Use the Speed FF if you like the Speed FF. Um, if you can find a clay one, great. Use the clay one on clay. Um, so yeah, that's my bit on shoes. Questions, comments, concerns? Like I said, I talk quickly, I say a lot, and I'd be surprised if most of that stuck. Um, but as always, I think most of you know me well enough at this point that you're comfortable coming to me and asking personal questions. But if you have any others, I'm happy to, either we can all discuss them together, or you can come up to me separately, and I'll happily answer anything. So oh, when you say um, tensions, right? Mm -hmm. Soft tension, what's the range? Can you go by numbers? Yeah, so the average is going to be between about 50 to 60 pounds. Um, most players with polyester strings will drop that about 10%, so you'll see high 40s, low 50s. Um, but again, up, it's sort of up to the player what works for him or her. Um, again, with polyesters, I, you'll see I, I make an earnest effort to drop most kids into the 40s. That's sort of my life goal to get every kid in the 40s. Um, and with players who are stringing above 55, I try to push them to at least come down a couple pounds. They try to go, oh, this actually feels good. I'm like, yeah, I know. It's weird. I know what I'm talking about. Um, so, yeah, that's what I would say. So like a player like Johnny, well, what range you open? Because I got him like 50. I would try to keep him there, especially since he's still using junior, I mean, he's finally graduated into 27 inch rackets, so um, I don't, I'd try to keep him as close to 50 as I can, um, if not even lower, because um, that allows him to sort of finesse and control as opposed to just the tighter you go, the more he just has to wail at the ball unnecessarily. Okay. Yes, Perry. So somebody's not liking their racket or their setup, whatever, for, maybe they've got a specific or they just don't like it, whatever. Yeah. But where would you suggest they start, racket or strings? Um, the analogy I'll make is let's get an oil change before you buy a new car. Um, so my first thing is I'll go after is the strings, because um, putting a fresh set of strings on a racket makes it feel brand new. But especially a new grip and new strings, oh, it's the greatest <laughs> feeling. Even if your racket's 20 years old, it makes it feel great, at least for a few minutes. Um, so yeah, I'd probably start with strings. Again, I'll ask, what are you sort of looking to get out of your racket and string setup that you're not currently getting? And then I'll push them in one direction or another. Um, but yeah, first thing is strings. If we can't fix it with some strings, then we'll talk about new rackets. So, you know, for chess, for chess, if you use the trust of FS, but that timing is 18 times 16, right? But that yes. I read his what's your suggestion to get a new racket or still? But he's really like the racket, so I don't know. If he likes it and he's playing well, I generally tell people stick with it. Um, but uh, I think finally he will to change the, to get, um, get uh, another racket, but uh, it's not, I don't think any racket have the pattern 18 times 16. Yeah, so the, what Wilson did um, a couple generations ago was they implemented what they called their spin effect string pattern. In other words, they had this brilliant idea of if we take out some of the cross strings, the mains will move more. Which, yes, that's right. It also decreases durability rapidly of the string, um, but that's the, that's the trade-off you get. They no longer make those string patterns uh, because a lot of players were losing their minds. A lot of stringers like myself were very happy about it, um, but a lot of players were losing their minds. Um, so that's why Jesse's been running into this problem. Uh, like I said, if he's playing well and he's happy, great. Um, if he's, if you know, he's you know, shanking a lot, or he's spraying the ball, or if he's, you know, his arm is hurting, then you can sort of talk about what to do next. Um, but in the situation he's in, where your racket's being discontinued, you sort of need to start getting in the mindset of my racket isn't made anymore. I have to move on. That happened to me. 
my rackets have been discontinued twice in the course of like five years. So you know, it's, it's a rough life, but we all have to live it. Any other questions? Guys. Thank you. Thank you. Always around. Feel free to call, email, pull me over, whatever it is. Happy to answer questions and help. Thank you. Thank you. No worries.